Yo guys, what's going on? This is Yoki Man here. Welcome back to another episode of this Football Manager 2020 save here with FC20. In today's episode, we're going to play against Ajax in the league. We're going to go through the form that's happened off camera since that dreadful, upsetting, just absolutely terrifying result against Spartak Moscow. If you didn't see it, don't watch it. It was awful. We also have a player in, big name, and a player out big name out as well which is a little bit sad but it just seemed to make sense with the formation we're playing but anyway guys let's cut the crap and get into it right guys so we might as well start with the player that has left the club and it is philip machowinski i'm not gonna miss saying his name but i'm gonna miss the player never used him before been fantastic for his great servant of the club but we did get 31 million for him. His history at the club was fantastic. He had a decent time. If we look at his average rating in the first season, he was there. And let's bear in mind, we signed him for 8.75 million. I think the most expensive signing at the time as well, and this is kind of the theme of what's happened, we've brought in these players that um, started to cost a little bit more, but were fantastic players, and then we've started selling them on. He's still very young. I think 22 years of age still. But Valencia came a knock in. It's a good opportunity for him in Spain. And Antonio Conte is at Valencia as well. So they look like a team that is on the up. He's had three appearances for them so far. 6.6 .6 average rating. He will be missed. I'm a huge fan of him. You can see 28 games in his first year. Average rating of 7.16. And last season, 25 games. Average rating of 7.02. He was a consistent performance for us. And he was a very good player in the team. But in the grand scheme of things, I'm looking at moving away from a cam and sticking to the 4-4-2, which he could play in more than comfortably but Seferos and several other players we had a strong uh, central midfield and I felt like the team was too big anyway we couldn't register everyone for European competition even though it's now Europa League but it was upsetting players we also let Mads leave we got two million for him his time was just done he came on a free we made a profit on him and again I couldn't register him he was upset about it he probably was not going to play much at all this season unfortunately I favoured Billy Gilmore and Sapreet Singh over him and then we also have Shulman, who is the young South African we signed, who I wouldn't mind giving a little bit of game time to as well. So Mads, unfortunately, has been sold. It's not the end of the world. It's just a small one. But let's look at who. Let's look. <laughs> Look at who we brought in. So we did bring in Fabio Silva, a player who I wasn't sure I would ever get to use, a player who I was sure in next year's game I probably won't get to use because Wolves picked him up. So he wasn't going to be someone who you could manage to sign. We paid $22 million for him. He was on the transfer list, unhappy at Porto, hadn't got much game time. You can see, as his attributes show, he is fantastic. Now, this also helped move into the 4-4-2. We do now have five very good Strikers, if I'm being honest, if you look at our strikers, it's ridiculous. I've got Butnik, Silva, Redden, Traore, and Matteo Cerezo. So I do have a, a superstardom of strikers, but it made sense to sign him. I might never get to use him. And a lot of this save, actually, for me, because I wouldn't usually do this style of save, he's getting to use players I've never used before and probably might not get to use in the future. A few of the players, I, like names I've ticked off the list, would have been Redden. I've never used him, but he, he gave me a lot of problems on last year's game. And again, Butnik, never really known much about him, heard much about him, but he's probably one of my up there with one of my favorite strikers, especially at this club and in the entire game that we've used this season but let's see how we've been getting on so after that disappointing defeat you can see it says c of green we beat vitesse 2-0 butnik and triore we then beat willem 2 4-1 uh coincide triore and butnik butnik is on like i think he's on 11 goals in 12 games the man just he scores goals he, he really does but lasana has started to come good i think i mentioned when we signed him and especially in last season when we signed him how good i knew he was and how good he could be so anyone that was questioning that sign in ha! but yeah i i know from experience that he's a decent player i had him at preston in my save on twitch and he was fantastic for me we then beat young boys free one supreme sing benavidez and lasana triore again we then played against utrecht and beat them 5-1 supreme sing redden with the penalty butnik scoring and coincide getting two goals as you can see in this run coincide has really picked up some form which helps batista might have picked up a knock and as you know in this game you pick up a knock you don't always regain form straight away and Coinsau has been doing the business for us. We then played against Emmen and beat them 4-1. Coinsau Redden with a double and Fabio Silva with his first goal for the club, which I was very excited about. And as we're seeing again, Redden, someone, another player who might have had question marks about him when I signed him on a free transfer, he's banging in goals for fun. So my experience 
My experience from last year's game is paying off. It is paying off. Uh, but Club Rouge was the game I was going to bring you. And then I realised Ajax was the game after. They're top of the league. We are four points behind them. We will look at the league table. We're four points behind them, so why not bring that game? I'm not expecting much from today's game, but you never know. Ajax, it might be a famous and brilliant game. Just absolutely brilliant win. But as you can see, two Europa League wins there against Bruges and Young Boys, and we play Victoria Pilsner. Yeah, next. Uh, I'm feeling pretty confident about the Europa League. It'll be when we get in the knockout stages and start playing against some better teams. But as you can see with the finances, we're super duper mega rich now. Well, we are. We've just put the club in a fantastic position. I still have 28.9 million. Imagine that. I've got the squad I've got, and I've got 28.9 million to spend if need be. And at this moment in time, I don't see any reason whatsoever to spend that. My wage budget is fantastic as well, which is decent. Uh, but I don't see any reason uh, to spend that amount of money or anywhere near that amount of money. But we might start thinking about it closer to the time. I'm scouting some players and looking at a few players that we might potentially bring in. But no one's no one's really just stuck out yet. Like I remember when I saw Butnick and that he wanted to leave and that they'd listed him. I just knew I had to sign him. Whether I needed him or not, I just knew I needed to sign him. Fabio Silva was the same. Um... Nobody else at this stage has stuck out. I'm very happy with my team. There is some contemplation of maybe another left back, a backup left back or right back, and maybe another centre back. But I'm not sure whether we're going to do any of those deals yet. I don't have anyone particular in mind, and I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty damn happy with the squad. So as you can see there, we are second in the league on 20 points. PSV this season, I might add, are having a horrendous season it's not going well for them but we are second on 20 points four points behind us are Feyenoord and then Utrecht are five points behind us so it's looking pretty decent already I know there's a few worries I know I know you're out there and you're worrying when we drew to Camembert and we had some bad results because it's happened a lot in this series but no it looks like safe and comfortable regardless of Europa League football that we've got a squad that's good enough this season that we will probably maybe get second potentially third but maybe get second i don't see us winning the league i don't think we're there yet there's still a few young players that are progressing to a stage where they're absolute world beaters i don't think we're quite at league winning um status yet but i don't think we're miles behind ajax now i really don't and we are also top of our europa league group with six points three points behind us is young boys and then club bruce and pilsner both on one Right, guys, so this will be the squad for today's game. Up top, Butnik and Redden. I've chose Redden today over Lasana Traore. They are the two in form strikers. I'm going with Redden because Lasana played midweek, and I just, I don't know, I just fancy Redden in this game. As you can see, we do have a few tired legs, but I don't have masses of options at the moment in centre midfield. As you can see, we are dealing with a few injuries with Seferosa being out at this moment in time and so is Showman. So we don't really have anyone back up. So they're just playing over time and Saprit Singh has been very good for us again this season. Serrano on the right. So again, maybe the winger position could be somewhere we look. I could potentially play Saramento today. Actually, we'll stick Saramento in. The back line, as you can see, it's a very strong squad. I do slightly fancy our chances. Like we're coming up against Ajax and I feel like we could lose, but I still feel like there's an opportunity or a chance that we might do all right in this game. Right, here we go. The game does kick off, and let's see how we fare today against Ajax. We've done fairly well against Ajax in our time at FC20 and Dutch football in general. Against the big sides, we tend to play all right, to be honest with you. We give them a little bit of a game. I'm going to make the comment again that I understand that there is reflection in my glasses, and it is extremely frustrating, but at this stage, because of the screen glare and the type of glasses they are, I don't know how to eliminate that. So they're just going to be there for a while. Just get used to it. It's fine. Your eyes will adjust. And as the game has gone so far, it's been it's been absolutely nothing. Nothing's going on here. It's not good for us, though, that the first highlight of the game is going to be for Ajax. Or is it? Is it going to be our breakaway? Redden, he can turn on the Jets. He can put the burners on. What can he do here? He can lose it. That's what he can do. He can he can lose the ball. But that's not bad. We're putting him under a bit of pressure. We've got to be careful because Batshuayi does score a lot of goals. Benavidez, to be honest with you, has come into his own in recent games. He complained at one stage and said, I want to play more. And I went, do you know what, Benavidez? You've been a great player for the club. I'll play you a few games. And remember, we signed Benavidez just because he was very much similar to Ugrate. And we lost Ugrate. He's probably one of the big... First transfers we ever lost. Go on, Batista Maia from the free kick straight into Anana's hands. I can't believe they've still got Onana. Um, 
Yeah, he was one of the first players we lost, one of the first big players we lost. And I literally just scouted players that were just like him. Benavidez was the one that came up. Nice, cheap player. And ever since that, he's been a fantastic servant for the club. And again, this season, he's having a pretty decent season for us. He's fairly consistent as we can break away here. And Butnik can break away. And we know he can finish, but not against Onana, apparently. Uh, he hasn't had his shooting boots on in the past couple of days. Is that going to be... Is that it's not going to be a penalty? Yeah, he hasn't had his shooting boots on in the last few games. He's been a little bit lacklustre, which hasn't been a problem because Lissana Traore has been picking it up and so has Redden. We do look like a better team so far in this first half, but without the goals, I mean, it means absolutely nothing. It's great. Do you win an award for being the better team? You don't. I know that as a Leeds fan after playing against Liverpool in the first game of the Premiership. It was fantastic. Also, guys... How, how good is it? How good is it? Football's back. It's great. It's just a great time. We just need Wednesday New FM coming out. That's what we need. Give us dates. Miles, please get on the blower. Let me know. But let's see if we can pick up a goal here as Benavidez's shot is blocked. Uh, we look pretty decent, though. That'll be half time, so not that decent. But, I mean, we haven't been terrible. We've got to remember, we are playing against such opposition. And Batshuayi is on a 6.3, so we're limiting him. And he's their danger man. He is their danger man. We're limiting him to pretty much nothing. And to be honest with you, besides Feyenoord, teams haven't really spent that much in this league, which is a surprise. I know Ajax don't really use that model, but I just kind of thought that Ajax would bring in a few more players than what they have. They've been very quiet in the transfer window. Right, so they've actually made a substitution instantly bringing, off Car uh, bringing on Carlos Elena for Gruric. And Elena obviously gives them a different kind of style, a fantastic playmaker. I've used him before. We all know he's a great player. He ends up going on a free transfer as Ryan Gravenberch scores, and, and that's great news for everyone involved, isn't it? Ryan Gravenberch, everybody. I can't believe he's still there. That's his third goal of the season. We've been undone by a throw, and we've been undone at the near post, really. Shouldn't be getting beat there, should we? And it looks Looks like the substitution may have worked in their favour because they've had two on target. They haven't done much, uh, but this second half they look they look a damn sight better, don't they? They've come out of the traps. And we don't look very good. We don't. We look a little bit subpar. Batista Meyer's not having a great game, but Saramento here, it's just not great, is it? It's just not great. We need to find a way through. I do have a little bit of faith in the team that they could do something, but I think we're going to have to make some changes here because I'm not overly happy in the performance, although we will win the ball back here. Butnik. Butnik had such a good opportunity as well. So Preet Singh, Volante, mixed first season for Volante, but it's early doors. And when you come from Argentina, it may take a, uh, a season-ish or a season, a half a season maybe for him to settle in. He's not been unbelievable, but he did pick up an injury as well. I've got to remember that. He picked up an injury early doors in the season. Mature coming back from injury. This is his first full start since coming back from injury as well. We've been a little bit injury prone this season. Saramento testing the hands of the goalkeeper, but still no breakthrough for us. And we're losing 1-0 to uh, to Ajax, or Ajax, as I like to call them when we lose. Benavidez could not do what Gravenberch did. Oh, well. Right, Mature now. He's just playing it nice and easy at the back. I mean, I'm not nervous. It's fine. Go on, Volante. He waited way too long to play in Batista Meyer, but he does play him in eventually. It's not great. It'll be a corner. Batista Meyer needs to find his shooting boots again. He's not been great of late, and uh, yeah, he's been a little bit disappointing. He started the season off really well and then had that injury, and uh, he's just not come back from it. And sometimes I find that with players, it takes them a little while to get back into the swing of things. Right, so on comes Lasana Traore and Serrano, and I hope that they have some better luck at breaking down Ajax, because at this moment in time, they're being very difficult to score past. Not much has really happened here, as Traore knocks that down to Saprit Singh, and Serrano will pick it up, so the two substitutions now hopefully going to have an impact. Serrano, Lasana Traore hits the post, instantly having an impact. He, honestly, is a very good player, he's very powerful as well. We're playing him as, as a pressing forward, and it just works. It does just work as a pressing forward. It's where I've played him before but as you can see time's just ticking down and not much is happening for us and it does look like it could be a disappointing defeat really but well, don't think i'll be able to be disappointed with the way we've played and the manner that we've played but i will be disappointed that we haven't managed to score because we've had so many opportunities but nick now they're going forward it's a time for a late goal and 
Oh, wow, that was very, very close. And it, this is going to end such a great run of form for us as well, which is really devastating. But, I mean, what more can you do here? We've we've given it all we can give. We've hit the post now twice. And Anna's been a little bit lucky that it doesn't bounce off him and hit the back of the net. And they just took their opportunity when they got it. And it doesn't take much. I think they're still on two shots on target. Yeah, they are still on two shots on target. And it, that's all they needed, really. That one opportunity at the start of this second half, they caught us now happen and i think that's probably going to be the way the game ends i can't see us get back into it elena as much as i haven't seen much of him definitely made more of an impact than our subs although triore did nearly get a goal but uh we've been pretty quiet well that maybe they've just kept us quiet Tri triore is gonna get sent off triore has made an impact triore has made an impact he's come on He's got sent off. That's the impact. It's not really the impact we were going for. It's not, you know, I kind of wanted a goal out of him. It wasn't really, a red card wasn't really in the offing. It's not really what I wanted from him. That's why he now will get an opportunity and it's a good block. And I think the referee surely is going to blow his whistle any time now and it will finish 1-0 to Ajax. So nonetheless, not an embarrassing defeat. Again, we were well in the game and I expected us to be. We were probably the better side than on a different day. We might have got uh, the goals needed. We were the only team with clear-cut chances with two of them. We just couldn't take them today and... It's difficult when you play in midweek. I find when we play midweek, we're always a little bit less impactful in the next league game. Maybe that's... I'm just trying to find excuses for the lads, aren't I? But Triore being sent off is just... It's not what you want from a substitute, is it, really? So we're still second in the league. Uh, Feyenoord now three points behind Utrecht four. But we have just played the best team in the league. They're on 27 points, 22 goal difference. They are running away with the league this season, are Ajax. They really are a superb team, and I can't really complain, can I, when we get poor results against a team like that. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on the series. We are really starting to ramp up now in the series. We're getting to... I think the later stages of it the thing is is when you do a series on YouTube the first episode and the second episode and so on and so forth tend to do all right but this series a bit of a longer term one it does tail off I'm more than expectant of it but anyone who's still hanging around for this series I appreciate it I'm enjoying making it more importantly I'm enjoying the save the team we've built is fantastic and some of the players we've got now are brilliant unlucky for us today back to back live comes now defeats but one once against Ajax and one was I'm just gonna chalk that down to a to an absolute fluke because that doesn't usually happen to me I've said that a few times before haven't I anyway guys take care I'll see you in the next one